So I went ahead and did a quick dry fit again, um, just to make sure everything looked okay. And so at this point, this is where um, you can decide what you want to do to it. I'll point out some of the features that I did and I'll show you a couple of little uh, how to hand profile, uh, how to do profiles by hand. But you can leave the square, I mean, I would ease the edges at least. Um, you can leave all of this square, just ease the edges nicely. You could put chamfers on everything. It just depends what you like. Um, for me, I like the, like the fingernail edge bit. So it's almost like a, a, it's a radius bit and using different portions of that. So on the slats up here, they just kind of come down on each other and then the outside ones do the same. They just roll back underneath. It just gives it this really nice, elegant look. Um, the fun thing with this piece, it's really, it's all about transitions and how different components come together and how they relate to each other, which is important. And, you know, it's like leaving, leaving this side stick proud from the slat and then the slats proud from the under rail, all those little subtle things. Um, now the edges here, I end up doing that same bit where it just gets prof profiled back inwards. So it's kind of doing this, uh, looks really nice. And then I even did um, a profile, which is really hard to see. But I did a profile on this too, which is, it's kind of stupid. Like you really don't notice it. Uh, most people are not going to notice it, but a lot of what I do is so small things that people don't notice. They can't point out why it looks nice to them. But a lot of times it's because of those subtle details, um, but they don't necessarily know what it is. So that's just a nice little profile too. So I'm going to show that one doing it by hand. Um, and then, you know, you can decide what you want to do on these and I'll, I'll demo one of these two, um, there's different router bits you can get that would make this go a lot faster. Um, but if you're just building one, hand tool, spoke shave, uh, sanding is kind of way to go and just really enjoy the process. Um, all right, so get that done, then it's really sanding out all the parts and then we, you know, it's, it's glue up and get the wedges put in. So I'm gonna just demonstrate um, how I lay out to do this profile um, and it's really just kind of starting to trust your eye you don't need to have 20 different calipers and squares and stuff to do this so I'm going to give myself a center line so I'm just going to eyeball that center line flip it over and then see how close I've got to it and now I can basically drop my pencil in between those two lines and that will give me close enough a center line um, then I'm going to come down maybe maybe like an eighth inch or so. You don't have to measure this. And so those are just guidelines uh, as I start going ahead and do this. So I'm just gonna use my hand plane, but I'm simply creating all these facets. Um, and then I'll create one big like chamfer, one big facet. Then I'll basically be taking off like the, the high points off of those and just work it around and then finish up with sanding. So I'm going to set this at more of a coarse bite. All right, so I'm getting nice fast. I'm trying to keep it consistent. So I'm going to keep going with that for a bit on that same angle now I'm going to just tip this guy down a little bit I'm going to cut to my line and then I'm going to come up to the center here on that apex cut to that line I'll take the line <laughs> Alright, so now I'm just going to flip it over, do the same on the other side. And now, so now I'm just going to come along and just work this kind of over as I go. So you can see, show this camera maybe, 
I've got that profile now that looks pretty, pretty good. Um, so now it's just working that in. So I'm really done with the hand planes. And I'll just pencil it up. And I've got some 120 on here. So a long block's gonna be better than a short one. Just the same deal as using this longer than a short plane so you don't ride in any valleys. Um, a little bit of tear out with that ash, probably going against the grain at that one point this way. You should also get it. The thing to keep in mind too is you'll never be able to run your eye down this um, when it's in the piece, but the thing you'll see is when it's up against the wall, that's what you'll see. So make sure you make these nice and consistent. All right, so now 180. And usually I use a piece of cardboard. This is like a, some kind of medium density foam. That will kind of do the same job. I'm just going to come through here and again get all those facets, blend them all in, and maintain that crisp edge too. Nice. So 220 and 320, you're just going to work your way through the grits. Um, but you want to take your time on the coarse grits, make sure you get everything looking right before you move on to the finer grits. You should just be wasting time on the finer grit. Alright, I'm just going to lightly ease that edge. So that's it. Just just a nice little touch. I think it kind of pays off. Just shows that you care. Cool. So that's really all that's happening there. I mean the rest, you know, just sanding. I'll block sand this out. I'm not going to use an orbital sander on these small parks. I'll probably use an orbital sander on the side panels. Um, but you just want to work through the grits. You want to start off you know, kind of evaluate, like, is there a tear out? Are there a lot of machine marks? Um, people always think, oh, I'm gonna start with a finer grit, and then you end up spending way more time on that finer grit, instead of just stopping, go to a coarse grit, work through those machine marks. And that's the fastest, well, that's, that's the grit you spend the more time on, because you'll work through those machine marks, but once that's done, the rest of the grits are really fast, because all you're doing is cutting the grit, the one before, the one before. So getting that finer and finer and finer. So probably, you know, 100 grit, 120, 180, 243, 20, uh, and then you're done. Depending on what finish you're using, you may need to go higher uh, for an oil. So that's that one. I'll show an edge of, like, the curved edge. <clears throat> it's pretty much, well, it's similar, but, yeah, you're going to be using a, a spoke shave for this. I'm going to go ahead and create this profile on the on one edge uh, using a spoke shave. Just kind of demo that and show you how I do it. But you want to make sure you've got the outside face, so that's out, and it's curving back in. Again, you know, if you like the idea of it curving out, you can do that. There's really no wrong or right here, but I think it looks better curving in. It kind of gives it more grounding. Um, so I went ahead, marked about, you know, 3 sixteenths back found my center, so I have the guide point, and now you want to work downhill. We've got this really straight grain coming out here, so this is all short grain hair as it comes through here, um, because it's not following this shape at all. So if I try to spoke shave this way, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna blow out chips and, and you know, just make a real mess of it. So make sure you're going downhill. And even though it's a curve, we're going to find out, but I think this flat bottom, since it's such a narrow, um, you know, flat bottom, we should be able to use it and it'll give me a little more control. And with Ash, Ash, I have a hard time seeing what I'm doing, so I'm going to mark it. 
so I have a better idea where I'm at. Alright, we get a nice flat, consistent flat there. Now I'm going to bevel it, uh, angle it inwards a little bit. A lot of times I typically will be going away from me, but I don't want to put my back on the camera. Uh, but, you know, you can do it both ways. This works. All right, I'm pretty much on that baseline. I'm going to take a little more back towards the midsection, just till I hit that line. All right, so that looks good. Again, I can use this since it is a, it's not a, a, a huge, radius, not very deep, so I can, not tight radius, I guess, I can use this flat and get in here and sand it, mark it again, and really just blending it in now. All right, so looking pretty good. Looks really nice. Keeping these lines hard, when I say hard, I don't mean sharp, but I'm kind of keeping this paper pushed back so I'm not like, I'm not grabbing it and just rolling it over this thing where it's just gonna make a big blubby mess. You wanna maintain that line, that's what makes it look good. Looks good. And now I'm just come through, just ease that edge. All right, so I'll do that to the rest of them. I'll sand out the inside face. I won't worry about the outside face because it's gonna have to get sanded afterwards once we put the wedges in. But if you can see that, looks really nice. Uh, just a nice little extra touch to the piece. Now that I have all my parts sanded out, um, it's, I'm ready to glue up. So I just wanna explain a little bit about the sanding. Um, uh, like I demoed, I did all the profiles, got those all done, sanded the inside, um, I went to 320 on that, and all the parts I went to 320. The outside is not done because that's going to happen later on, you just want to make more work for yourself. You're going to have to cut off those wedges, flush, and then sand it all out, and then you can ease the, all the edges. Um, on the rails themselves, everything's finished on this because it's going to be really difficult to get to that once it's glued up. So it's a good idea to just do it now. Um, and that's pretty much it. It's pretty simple. So it is a through mortise um, where typically you really put most of the glue in the actual mortise. That would not be a good situation here because you're just going to pour it all out onto the table. Um, so I will put more, be, be a little bit heavier with the glue on the actual tenon, which is not what I usually do. Um, we'll get some squeeze out. I'll have some water and a little brush. Voila. Um, clean water, preferably if it's hot, and a toothbrush really gets in there and gets that glue all out of there instead of getting a rag and just spreading it all over the place. And you don't know until you put the finish on and you see all that glue. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to sp spread the glue, get it on, get it clamped, bring it home and then try to get the clamps somewhat out of the way so I can start driving those wedges. So I've got my hammer, my wedges, got my clamps over here. Um, should be pretty straightforward. Like I mentioned, I'm gonna be a little more generous with the glue on the tenon. I don't usually put that much glue on the tenon. I do mortise and the tenon, but very little on the tenon. But this is what's going to hold this together, that and the wedge. Uh, another tip, because um, you can get yourself into trouble, is sometimes it's a good idea just to ease the edges of these tenons so as it goes through, it doesn't end up getting caught up and then blow out on the outside. Um, so that's kind of a, a handy thing to do, if you remember.
So I'm going to put the clamp just right next to um, the mortise. That's the problem with the tannin sticking through. Um, ideally, you want a coal that kind of goes over the tannin so that you can clamp directly in line. So I'm going to see if I can... You, you, can, you can snap something here too, so you've got to be careful. All right, there it goes. I'm going to grab one more clamp because, you know, because I'm clamping on the outside edges, it's, it's wanted to do this, it's pinching. So I'm going to put a clamp right down the middle to help that. Ta-da. Yeah, okay. All right, I'm just going to do a little clean up. Before I forget. Nice thing with the toothbrush, it really, it just gets it all out. It doesn't spread it about. And you just go back with a little 320, touch it up. So I have some mahogany wedges here, uh, just a little bit of a contrast for it could look cool. Um, now we have a really simple uh, video showing you how to make wedges if you don't know how to do these. So this is a bandsaw wedge, it's very simple and if you want to access that video it's for free and so you can go and check that out. Um, and uh, yeah, make a quick jig and make some wedges. So got these guys ready, uh, hammer, and then just a little bit of glue. You want to do it whilst these tenons are still wet, because the idea is that you're going to glue these, and you know, you're going to force these apart, and that glue is going to end up gluing itself to the opening too. Um, and, and not, it can end up drying to where it doesn't even want to open. So you definitely want to do it whilst it's somewhat wet. Now, this one at the top, I'm not just going to go smashing this in, it's right close to that end grain, we've got about a half inch there. If I go smashing that in, I could pop that end grain out. These are some, a little bit decorative, it does add some structural integrity, but probably not even necessary. Let's see if I can... You can see I'm not just smashing the heck out of them. It's just closing up the tenons. This one you could hit a little bit harder because you have more meat there. And you really do, when you do wedges, you want the wedge to go against the grain, not, not with the grain. I guess perpendicular to the grain so it doesn't just split that grain open. Good. Let that dry, cut it off. This can come out of the clamps now. The wedges are going to hold it. And it's, you know, maybe I'll leave it for about 10, 15 minutes and then take the clamps off and trim those back. So to cut off the, um, the wedges and the tenon flush to the surface, I'm just going to use a little flush trim saw. This one is by Veritas and it actually has, uh, it does have a set but only in one direction. So it has a little deal on it that says this side up so that way you don't scratch up your surface. Since I don't have much tenon sticking out, it's not going to probably cut the tenon at all. But we'll just plane it and then sand it.
looks really good. And then that'll get sanded out. I like the little contrast there, not too much contrast, but. So now we have the wedges cut off, everything is sanded, all the edges are eased. Um, this guy is pretty much ready to go. Um, now, if I was gonna spray, I'll just spray this without the slats on and do the slats separately. There's not a whole lot to gain from gluing, trying to glue these on, because you've got end grain to long grain. It's not very strong. And I went ahead too and undercut the inside of this, so that way it's not rucking around on there anymore. So the glue is really not going to make a contact. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and just put it all together. <clears throat> I'm going to use some pins that I cut. So I got some eighth inch pins, uh, eighth inch uh, rod, cut it to about an inch, chamfer the, uh, the leading edge. And I'm just going to do a couple, um, two on the outer wider ones and then one in the middle of the others. And I'm just going to eyeball it. I'm not going to get too precious about getting it right on. Of course, if you want to, you can just lay out the marks and stuff, but I'm just going to trust my eye for the most part. Ash is a little weird, it can wander off, so we'll see how it goes. Um, but I'll mix up some epoxy. So I'll get this eyeball located where, where I think it looks good, um, and then basically drill, dip it in some of this epoxy, two part epoxy, and put it in. If you have some five minute epoxy, that's great. It's a little too, it'd be better than what this is. I just don't have any epoxy. This stuff takes like 20 hours for it to cure, so it's not ideal. Um, but glue just really doesn't work, just regular glue. Uh, okay, so the only mark I did do is as far as like how far in does it need to come, because we want it to go in the center of this and I want that to look uniform. And so now I'm just gonna eyeball the margin here. Make sure I've got the overhang. That looks good. And go ahead and just drill these out. All right. I'm probably going to get this mixed up and go put a pin in so it locks it in place. So I'm not moving things around. <laughs> yeah. Try and get that pin as much as possible without getting it all over my hands. Now that I have my brass pins um, in and things have had a little bit of time to set up, I can go ahead and file these back. So this is just a, a fine bastard file and I'll just use this, cut the brass back and then I'll sand it out with an old tool or just a sand and block uh, down to 220. Um, the wood's always gonna cut faster than the brass so you just gotta be careful because sometimes you, know, you can leave it a little bit wavy. Um, but in this case, for what it is, it's gonna be fine. If you don't have brass or epoxy, um, you could use screw. I mean, there's options. You could just use some kind of pretty looking screws and just leave it exposed if you want. Or you could find some long screws, some brass screws um, that have like a long neck to them. And then you can pre-drill properly, to, you know, the finger brass screws as they want to snap easily too. But if you pre-drill it all, get those screwed in and you just stop short, then you can cut that head off and then you'll get that same kind of result but with a mechanical fastening instead of the glue itself. Um, so yeah, there's, there's different options for that. Okay, so there's the bench. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this class. There's a lot of fun little details and techniques involved in this and hopefully you come away learning a new skill set and with a final piece like this. So the last thing I'll do um, is the finish. Um, in my shop, I use conversion varnish, so I'm spraying stuff. So I'll spray all of this 
um, you know, but that's kind of a difficult finish for people starting out uh, to get their, their head wrapped around. Um, so just just an oil will look great. Um, maybe a Rubio Monaco or Osmo or something like that would look really nice. And you could have a little fun too. You could do some like dye stains with it, um, give it a little pop of color, definitely this ash. Um, but I'm going to leave it natural and um, and then it's going to live in my house and I'll give it to one of my kids. <laughs> so again, thank you for taking this class with me. Please check out other classes that we have uh, available and keep in touch and see the classes that we have upcoming. And uh, thank you. I hope you enjoyed.